Aloha from Waikiki Beach. This is Bear Wozniak. I'm right above St. Augustine's Catholic Church in Waikiki, and we have this beautiful view out towards Diamond Head over the ocean, and it was so cool because we're starting to see the whales come into uh, to uh, Hawaii. It's the time of calving, and you know, they have their, their young. And it's so cool to look out in the horizon and see that spout. Two big spouts, maybe three big spouts, and then a little baby uh, spout. And then sometimes you'll see them, their, their tails come up in the air. And it's just such a beautiful time to celebrate the glory and wonder of God's creation. We have a great guest today, Father Mark Goring. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This is the stand that I think every man needs to make uh, during this time. There's, Jesus said something really interesting. It's kind of strange. It's kind of like the G.K. Chesterton sort of statement where he turns things on its head. He said, to be of good cheer. You know what he said to be of good cheer about? When you face various trials, in the world you'll have tr tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And I've been noticing lately uh, on, uh, uh, on the news, although I've been toning that out lately, but that the people that really love the Lord and are standing for the moral teaching of the, of, of, of the Lord and the Catholic Church, they seem, even though they know they're in a battle, they seem to have a, a joy. They're able to take things in stride. But for those that have angst and anarchy and are preaching, uh, as the Bible says, those who say evil is good and good is evil, they seem to be angry. They don't seem to have any joy in their life. So as Christians... You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And and so if you're looking glum, man, you better get into the Word and get into the book of Psalms and just start praising the Lord. The, and, and, you know, it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise. That's how you get there is by thanksgiving and praise because it lifts us out of our circumstances and puts us in the presence of God. We have today as our guest uh, Father Mark Goring. What a privilege to, by the way, Father, uh, I, sh I should show that to you. Father Marcus, there. he's the one that gave me that Traveler's uh, Catechism. And so welcome to the show, Father. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Bear. Good to be with you. Good to see you. Hey, can I show you something real quick? Absolutely. Let's check it out. Okay, so you said you, you've got the ocean, right? So I'm up in Canada, so I don't know if you're going to be able to catch this, but check this out. Oh, how beautiful. Lots of water. That's not water. It's snow. I don't know well, if you can tell. That's my snow snowy winter, winter but, wonderland. But snow is made out of water. Oh, right. That's so right. he's got that a beachfront is. location there, but it's snow. How many? It's not too deep. Maybe a half a foot. Yeah, it might be about a foot, foot and a half of snow. And where are you right now? Ottawa, Canada. I just thought that was a rumor. That's a real place, huh? <laughs> I get to go up to Canada this year. I get to go up to Regina. Uh, in okay. September, in September, early September, so I don't have to, uh, you know, uh, deal with all the, well, maybe I will deal with snow in September, I don't know. But yeah, you know, and here's Father Mark, uh, we got to know each other really because uh, one of your, one of I think Kim Sunderman came into your office and said, you got to go to this Deep Adventure Quest Bears having in Florida, and I met you there, and uh, I met uh, Father Mark Goring, uh, surfer, biker, skateboarder are you still skateboarding every day are you still trying to do that it's been a while in canada we don't have the same skate parks i had in texas especially in the winter and and long story but uh i've been uh been into some other stuff lately not as what? much skateboarding. what are you into these days uh be, uh ha hacky sack uh -huh. <laughs> what is I've it been, you're doing uh, what is it you're doing in, for fun? In, in the winter, we got the uh, the snowboarding. I've been cross country skiing. I have a fat bike. I don't know. You, you know, it, you would call them beach bikes with the big yeah. fat tires. Yeah. We we use those in the snow. So I got one of those. Um, I'm a hockey player, but I haven't been out on the ice. I don't think yet this year. So there's lots to do. Like if you like sports 
in Canada in the winter, there's a whole bunch of cool winter sports. You just got a little window of time. Ice fishing, snowshoeing. I do it all. Okay, Love but it. we everyone wants to know one thing. Okay, this is the thing that everyone wants to know. Do you do curling? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny. I've never, I've never done curling once in my whole life. Uh, <laughs> You're missing out. Uh, apparently, I have. Hey, listen, if a bunch of friends were to say, hey, let's go curling, I'd be like, yeah, sign me up, man. <laughs> yeah, bring me my broom and I'll, you know, it's kind of like <laughs> curling and hockey are similar because they give you a stick to hold on to so you don't fall over, right? That's the That's whole thing. Right. Yeah. I don't think as many fights break out in curling games as doing hockey. <laughs> it's one of the few sports. It's kind of like bowling. You can gain weight while you're doing it, right? <laughs> right. It's kind of one of those. I know. I lived in the I lived in the frozen tundra of Minnesota for four winters, oh. and uh, and I my only relief from that. Well, of course, I played some racquetball, but t but to me, I need to be outdoors. And cross country skiing isn't for wimps, dude. That's that is maybe the hardest workout there is. Well, it's it's a great cardio workout because you 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 know you you push with your with your you use your arms you're obviously using your legs you're getting your cardio, um, it is there's balance involved so yeah cross country skiing is is a is a great way to work out also a nice way to see the the wonderful outdoors yeah I know I've I've take I've, I've done the groomed trails. And then uh, my dad used to live in the North Woods of Minnesota. My, my parents abandoned me, you know, in, in California, moved up there. And uh, he would have on, you know, just a, where there used to be a road in the, in the summertime. And to go through unbroken trails and make your own trails is. And then, can you tell a Mark turn on those? Are you good enough to do that? Yeah, yeah. I, I do all the different types of cross country skiing. The ones, the ones I have are, um, it's called skate skiing. Oh, so they're... you can do the classic, but it's also, it's kind of like skating on ice, but I, I do, I do all kinds of cross country skiing. I, I like to get in, in the like break trails in the bush also, but my favorite is kind of the skate skiing. I also like doing a bit of downhill on my cross country skis. There That's you go. A little more, a little more dangerous because yeah. they're so thin cross country yeah, skiing. Yeah. Are, and they're longer they, too, aren't they? Aren't they a little bit longer? I don't know. That, that's a good question. I I don't know if they're longer than downhill skis. Yeah, I don't know. You know, Cindy, um, uh, my wife is a snowboarder, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, but uh, not really. And and I and I downhill ski, but actually, only reason why I did that was because my friends made me do it, and they kept saying there's good mac and cheese at the very top, you know. <laughs> so that was that. And lately, we've gotten into spearfishing here at Waikiki. Oh wow! Yeah, it's been, yeah, we yeah. just go right out across. We just go right out on the beach in front of our house, and and we'll find the most beautiful fish. But we don't very good at poking them. But Cindy, the other day, this will crack you up. She got a lobster. She you know grabbed wow. it, and uh, and she we you know with the fish we have the thing to put through their gills to keep them. But we didn't have anything for the lobster, so she rolled it up in her rash guard on her back. So she had this big old bug, <laughs> you know, in oh, her wow. back when she came up out of the water. So and then she made us. You know some beautiful lobster, but you know there. There, what is it about being uh, out out in uh, being physical first of all, and then doing that out in nature? What is it about? So we, we're doing the my bear's man cave. You know I have about hundred guys that are part of this man cave, and uh, we meet together every couple of weeks to Zoom video chat. But we met last week and we went through fitness to witness that you have to be physically. You know what? It, what is it that? Uh, um, God would say to men about being physically fit. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just, I guess the way I'm wired, it's been like this my whole life. I pretty much have to do something physical every day just, just to be happy. You know, if mm -hmm. I if I go two or three days without some kind of exercise, I just get down, I get grumpy, I get depressed, you me know. Me too. Uh, yeah. And... Um, I mean, the Lord calls us to life in abundance. We're human, you know, we're, we're, we're in, in, uh, in soul bodies or, you know, we're a unity of body and soul. And I, I think, you know, we can give glory to God by living, by being alive and by doing those wonderful things that, you know, this wonderful life offers us. Uh, I, I, when I was a teenager going through my conversion, I really felt the Lord command me to live. To, to use my creativity and, and to do the wonderful things that you can do in this world to give him glory, you know? And so um, the Lord isn't, a, he's not a boring God. He's a, he's a, a thrilling God, an exciting God, a creative God. 
And I think it gives them glory when, when we live life in abundance. Um, there's a lot of ways we can get caught up in, in, in sinful things or lifestyles or actions. And I think part of the way to counter the temptation to get into bad stuff is to do good stuff. It, mm. It's a basic principle in the spiritual life. If you're doing mm. a lot of good, wholesome stuff, you're not going to be doing other bad stuff, you know? So we have mm. to fill our lives with things. And, and like you say, it's a good witness when people see Catholic men doing manly, cool, physical, adventurous things. They say, hey, this guy this guy's living in a way that, that inspires me. And you know, it also, uh, it, it not being in shape can... can can definitely detour you from God's plan for your life. You know, if you're not, you could die young or not be able to fulfill the mission that God has for you. So it's just part of what we are as human beings, but God loves our bodies. He, he even became human, you know. He He loves that physical part of us. And I know when, I, when I'm when i riding a good wave, sometimes I'll sense, like, um, I don't know, I just think Mary's Mary's enjoying it and, and that, that Jesus takes pleasure in in my riding a riding a good wave, and and I I just have I just think there's there's the joy I feel that it's not just me that feels that. We're talking with Father Mark Goring. Uh, he's a member, by the way, of he's a cast member of Long Ride Home, uh, the EWTN motorcycle TV show. We'll get right back. We're going to get into what's really going on in the world today. We're going to talk about the season that uh, that we're in and and get gritty with Father Mark Goring. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Men, are you looking for something that you can lead your sons through that will help them grow in manly virtue? Our new school of manliness provides you and your sons with 36 months of audio, video, and written lessons that includes a full toolbox with all of our Long Ride Home TV series, all the video versions of the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show, Bear's Daily Catechism in a Year video podcast, Pat Gervais, the Catholic Biker Daily Rosary, and a lot more. You can lead your sons of confirmation age and above through this manly school. Go to deepadventure.com and look into Bear's new school of manliness. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I don't want to invite the men out there to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and press the little button on the upper right-hand corner that says Bear's Man Cave. We have a group of men there that are really uh, seeking to go deeper with the Lord, and uh, and we're, we're it's a private Facebook group, but you really can't join it other than by going through our website. We're very careful about who we have become members. But if you're a young, young man... Uh, 18 years or, or older, uh, through up through any age, uh, you can join the Man Cave. And what we do there is we really get real with each other. We challenge each other. We talk about our own failings and our successes. We encourage each other. We pray for each other. It's just a great forum. You can't go visit there once a day and not feel, you know, like your, your uh, trajectory in your life has been trued up 
and uh, you know, going on the right path. And we also have our Zoom video chat. It's everything. It's always odd times of day and days of the week. And uh, maybe it's once a week for a while. Sometimes it's once a month. But we we get together. We've been doing it now for several years, and we and we challenge and encourage each other. And uh, men need other men to uh, to become to become strong. And what we're doing is, frankly, we're just calling each other to manly virtue. So uh, we encourage you to go to uh, deepadventure.com and consider joining uh, Bears Man Cave. And for you women out there, the mama bears out there, we just want to acknowledge you and thank you for your participation in our ministry. Uh, my son Joshua was telling me, Dad, do you remember when we were in Montana? And uh, well, I guess it was Jeremiah, my oldest son, I think, said this. Those grizzly bears, how gnarly they were, especially the mama bears. Uh, because I've come across a mama bear with her cubs, and my dad actually one time stepped between a mama bear and her cubs. There's nothing more furious, ferocious, powerful uh, than a mama bear. And so our mama bears out here that support the bear, the bear ministry here, um, you're ferociously uh, loving your children and the men in your family, and we appreciate your intercession for them and for us. And if you want to become part of what we can do, there's a place there for you, too, if you go to our website. Um, and and I, th I think it says join the pack or something like that. But there's a place there just for the mama bears. You get a I think you get a long ride home coffee mug and stuff like that too. So we invite all of you to become part of the ministry when you join with us. And for example, share share this. Uh, this of course goes out over EWTN, all the podcast apps and YouTube. Press the share button if you can and 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 participate and become an evangelist. Father Mark Goring is there with us, uh, uh, pastor in uh, in. Uh, Ottawa, Ottawa, Canada. Canada. And, St. You know, Mary's Parish. St. Mary's Parish. Oh, cool. Well, you know, Father, when you uh, came to Cocoa Beach and we had that, that Deep Adventure Quest retreat, and you gave me that catechism, it's, it's so cool because it's not even an inch thick, I would say, very thin-leaved, and it has a really good binding on it. And I've carried it. It's, you, I think you wrote in there the Traveling Man's Catechism. Any catechism that I've ever had other than that one, I break the binding on it. within a, It starts to fall apart within about six months because I'm opening up and taking notes. And, and I use that. Do you know I use that every single morning? We do an ocean catechism, usually on the beach, for about 10 minutes every morning on Facebook Live. And so uh, I, I think of you every day and pray for you every day. And thank you so much for that gift. Right. Praise God, yeah, good to hear that the catechism is being put to good use. You know, you can't get that book anymore. I've tried. I guess it's out of print. I think it was printed in Oz, wasn't it, in Australia? That's the Australian one, yep. Yeah. That's yeah. the Australian kind of printing of the catechism. And there was a priest years ago, he kind of walked into the sacristy, and he's like, hey, check this out. And I'm like, what? And he said, yeah, you only get this in Australia. And then I had a friend who went to work in Australia, and she said, like, can I get you anything? I said, yeah, get me some of those catechisms. So she got wow. me she got me a bunch of them. And, yeah, they're, they're the best. Hey, we heard good news about Jay Flunker, by the way, speaking of friends and, and being in Texas. I guess he recently got married. And uh, yeah. so good to see the Lord blessing him. Love that guy. You know, he's the guy that every, wherever he goes, no matter what time of day, what does he say to people? Do you remember his greeting? Well, he's got a bunch of them. One of them is good morning. Yeah, good morning. Uh, what? It's 8 o'clock at night. Well, his mercies are new every morning, so good morning. Uh -huh. Yeah, another member of, of the Long Run Home cast. Father, when we look at circumstances today, um, the cancel culture, it's not just canceling, for example, people's Twitter account. It's canceling uh, the people who want to participate in those accounts or, 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 or people that used to be coming and able to give speeches some places are no longer allowed to give a speech. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, gnarly times. Some people come up and say, do you think we're in the end of times? Or do you think we're in the beginning of the end of times? Or where are we? Well, I always just say, my son Shane says always, God wins. So wherever we are, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Can you help help us uh, see what the, the signs of the times are now and what our response should be? Yeah, well, I mean, to me, we are living in, in apocalyptic times. When you look in the Old Testament, you see that um, with, with the, at the time of Noah, all the, the men of the earth, you know, were, were offending God, doing evil. And the Lord sent a, a flood, you know, a chastisement. 
Um, Sodom and Gomorrah, we know of the immorality that went on there. God sent fire down from uh, from heaven and destroyed um, Sodom and Gomorrah. We know that the when the Hebrew people were enslaved in Egypt, God uh, heard the cry of the poor and he set them free. And that happened through the ten plagues. Um, we're, we're living in a time when humanity, especially those who should know the God who made us, we've really set God aside. We've uh, we've rejected his commandments. We're embracing ideologies that um, directly contradict um, his law, the dignity of the human person. Um, and, you know, one of the things, some people might think it's a little thing, but we don't go to church on Sunday anymore. And I'm not talking mm. about because of the lockdowns, but just in general, you know, when you go to church on Sunday, whether you're Catholic or other Christian, what you're doing is you're acknowledging that I'm in covenant with God. And his people. I, yes. And so I go to church because he is my God and I'm his son. I'm, I'm his daughter. I'm his child. And so going to church on Sunday is ratifying that covenant, my identity. And when a person stops going to church on Sunday, it's like you're stepping aside or putting aside your covenant with God. It's like you're, 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 you're saying, like, I'm not under God anymore. I'm not walking with him anymore. And to me, humanity, especially, you know, in, in these Christian, uh, were, what were once Christian countries, we have to honor God and, and go to church on Sunday. People, people should pray. You know, we should pray every day. Um, we, we should um, uphold the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Um, we've we've drifted so far away from God having His rightful place in our life. And like the frog in the in the water that's boiling, like that's getting hotter and hotter and boiling. We don't even realize it. You know, we think, well, what, what's the big deal? You know, we're, we're independent. We're, we're in a liberal, secular, free culture. And to me, it's like, no, that, like, we, we, we can't reject God and think that everything's going to be hunky, hunky-dory. Now, again, what, what the future holds, how things are going to unfold, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what's, what's coming, but I believe what we're going through right now with this um, you know, these, the, the, the reaction to, to COVID, the, the, the restrictions, the economic effects, all of that, I think it's just part of God trying to get us back on track, you know? Father, you know, there's a, an example I heard once of a man who was petting a cat, and the cat was just bristling, like, Ugh! you know, its back was all up, you know? And you look, why is that cat so upset? And then you hear the man saying to the cat, turn around, cat, turn around, cat, because he was petting against the grain. Oh. And this this chastisement uh, that's happening right now, I think that's the word we used when we were off air, uh, is really the Lord's love. Just saying, turn around. Just just simple, just repent. Turn around and, and uh, experience God's love. We're talking with Father Mark Goring. Thank you so much for being in my life, Father Mark. Um, there's a great daily uh, you, um, email that I get every day because I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel. Can you tell, tell people what that YouTube channel is? Yeah, I have a little <laughs> YouTube channel. It's just named as my name, Father Mark Goring, and uh, I try to put out a, a little daily YouTube video. It's it, I try as much as possible to make uh, base it on, on sacred scriptures, so just something coming out of God's Word. I, I kind of cover a whole spectrum of, of topics. I like to talk about spirituality, current issues, saints, Marian apparitions, whatever comes to mind. Um, I try to keep them short and uh, seems to be blessing a lot of people. So people want to check it out. Everything you share is so, I love especially when you, you'll go into the, um, the Catholic teaching on, on spirituality, like you said, the uh, different ways God draws us deeper to him. But everything you share is like, yeah, that's what I needed to hear today. And you have a little bit of YouTube channel. I don't know, but the last time I checked, I think it was over a year ago, I think you had over 50,000 subscribers. That's not a little 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know you have probably a lot more than that now, but people really love you, and I know our, I know our EWTN family really loves you too. We're talking with Far- Father Mark Goring. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today we have as, as my co-adventure guide, Father Mark Goring. He's actually a cast member of of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show. Uh, maybe you don't know it, but uh, Long Ride Home has got season one and two. The EW10 just keeps re-airing those seasons. And uh, we're going to be releasing season three to EW10 just about the time you hear this this uh, this broadcast. And uh, season two and three, we're riding from Miami Beach we, all the way up to Virginia, then down the Blue Ridge Parkway, and then down the Tail of the Dragon. And, uh, and then episode four is leaving Tale of the Dragon. Uh, season four is going from the Tale of the Dragon back down to Orlando. And we've got three more seasons coming of filming in uh, the cinematic quality of Hawaii. And then we have a, a couple more seasons already in the can, uh, riding with the Knights on Bikes through Michigan. So we really appreciate your prayers for this, our, our, our adventure of making the show. It's, it's quite daunting, believe it or not. It's a huge task in post-production. But we something really cool happened. Um, season two of Long Ride Home actually won uh, four tally awards uh, out of eleven thousand entrants worldwide. Um, uh, the work that my son J- Shane did and my son Joshua did, and those who are on Long Ride Home. I don't even know if Father Mark knows that, but yeah, we won. I've got these really cool uh, trophies over here. We never even got to go get them, you know, like in the, you know, the red carpet thing because all that was shut down this year. But it's actually genuinely. Uh, entertaining and cinematic quality and we and we worked really hard for it to be that so that people wouldn't um, turn off their their cha- switch the channel we want to see them we want to sh- show them having father mark goring riding his motorcycle with his roman collar and them going what's that so uh, but the good news is everyone uh, it's up on prime video now too so if you if you're not able to catch it on EWTN and you want to power watch it with your family go to prime video and and season 1 and 2 are up hopefully season 3 will be up pretty soon so father mark thanks for being with us today on uh, the bear wozniak adventure oh uh, <clears throat> excuse me we were talking uh, earlier about about this chastisement, how it really is good news for the people of God, but why does Jesus say to be of good cheer when we face this kind of tribulation? What, what's the deeper work God's doing? Yeah. Well, the scripture that comes to mind also is the Lord says, those whom I love, I reprove and chastise. And I mean, I guess any parent would know if, you're, if your child is kind of getting close to harm, to trouble, you you run you yell you grab them you know away from the whatever the the highway the the attacking dog or the you know the the, the precipice and um, you know the Lord wants us to be free He wants us to enjoy the gift of life um, uh, but He also wants us to, um, to to walk the path that He's he he's set out for us as as humans you know and so you know the fullness of life comes by by living according to to the design of the god who made us and so yeah i just i just really believe that so much of the the, the liberal secular culture 
is is defiant of of God's law. Um, I, I think what we're seeing is the, the spirit of the Antichrist in, in, in some ways, you know, um, kind of taking us away from recognizing the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Like He is the Savior of the world. You know, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him you know, will have eternal life. And, um, you know, the devil doesn't want to see Jesus at the center of every human heart. And we, I mean, you know, Bear, I know that, you know, when, when we open our, our hearts to the Lord Jesus, He just, he, he fills us with an everlasting love. We know who we are. We know whose we are. We know our identity, our dignity, our destiny. And we love people in a whole new way. There's not one person on the face of the earth that we don't have a, a great love and compassion and care for. Um, and humanity desperately needs the vision that the Lord Jesus gives us. You look at communist countries that are atheistic, the way they treat humans, you think of China, you think of Russia, mm. other other totalitarian regimes, millions and millions of innocent lives lost. Why? Because they were seen as being in the way of progress. Mm. Mm. Ages, it, it's, it, it's atheism. Atheism is, you know, it's, it's satanic because it doesn't see the image of God in, in the human person. So mm. the world needs God. The world needs the truth of the Lord Jesus. And we're, we're living at a time when this is, there's a darkness, you know, and we need to be lights more than ever. You know, yes, the, but the light does shine out in the darkness. And if the dark is getting darker, the light's just going to gonna appear brighter to those who are seeking the light. I know I used to have this cabin in Montana right by Glacier Park, right four miles from Canada. And in the, in the fall, the winter, all of a sudden I realized I had neighbors, you know, because there wasn't so much foliage. And I could see them maybe a half a mile down the road or something. But I remember sitting in my cabin at night and seeing several miles away a light on in a, in a cabin or something. And that light will pierce the darkness. The darkness can't overcome the light. And we need to be joyful and just know that, that the Lord is... Is with us, but here's an interesting thing. I saw a sign the other day. I saw it, uh, an image of it on the news. Abortion is Catholic values, and I actually heard an announcement from the pulpit the other day. I don't even I don't even know if they, the person knew what they were saying, but they said uh, we promote gospel values, and it's almost like a code for saying we don't we're not you know it, it's it's taking the centrality of Jesus Christ away. And his and his uh, work of salvation, and our work of faithful obedience, and if you want to find a safe place from from Satan, be faithful to the teaching of the church, the magisterium of the church. That catechism, Father Mark, has given me. I've read it many times. Uh, know your faith. Know the moral teaching. And whenever you hear this sort of thing of Catholic values, you know, um, all of the New Enlightenment, the, the Enlightenment authors, you know, Voltaire and all those guys, they all considered themselves Christians, but they never talked about Jesus Christ, right? They just talked about values. We need to get back to the centrality of our, our, our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. What does that look like in somebody, someone's day? Jeff Caven says you can tell what you're, what's important in your life by the rhythm of your life. What is it? What is a, what is a, a personal and a vital relationship with Jesus Christ, what does their week look like? Yeah, excellent, excellent question. And I totally agree with Jeff Cavins on that one. You know, if you, if you want to know who a person is, just ask them what their daily routine is, you know. Um, like I said earlier, I, I, I definitely going to church on Sunday. I know it sounds like such a simple thing, but it's a simple thing that so many people are setting aside. Um time for prayer every day you know i know bear i know laymen who running businesses you know just in the world doing doing the things a man does working hard they take prayer time every day and it's impressive you know some people think oh you know only priests and monks uh, take prayer time every day that's not true I know so many, you know, men out in the world who, they, they, and I, guys, some guys, they get up early in the morning. They get up early in the morning, they'll spend an hour in prayer before they go to work, you know. Um, yes. 
And you know, there's a tradition in the in the in the primitive church of rising uh, when just before first light and praying until the sun rises, and then stopping when the sun sets and praying until it's dark. Um, if you're not praying, you know, it's so. I find like there are times when yeah, I will I will miss my morning prayer time. There seems to be something just pressing on me so much. But then I'll miss another one, and then I miss another one, and pretty soon I realize when I'm doing my morning catechism, I don't have that. Uh, inspiration that the Lord gives you during those you don't even know the Lord is speaking to your heart in those in those prayer times if you and those of those men who are who are they feel their kuleana they want to work they want to produce they need to uh, provide for their family and if they own a business the families are those that work for them but what what does the word what if you if you believe that work is important the most important thing you can do would be the liturgy of the mass or the liturgy of the hours. What does the liturgy mean? It means the work of the people. Your most important and most productive hour is that work that you do before the Lord every day. And so I have my office desk and my big screen for my computer, but between this media desk and my office desk is my prayer chair. Very comfortable. I have my reading stack right next to it. I look out over the ocean. I make my first cup of coffee. If you're not spending time with the Lord like that, you're getting swept by the strong currents of the, of the day. Yeah, yeah. It's just so important. Another thing, Bear, that you would appreciate, and again, the men who, who are kind of into sports and different uh, things like that, is working on that personal virtue, you know, getting more virtuous, holy, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. Um, like I, I used to skateboard a lot. I've done a lot of sports, but in, in the last couple of years, I was skateboarding hard for a few years. And, you know, my experience was uh, every day I would get just a little better yes. at my craft. Yes. A little better, you know? Yes. And I think in the spiritual life too, there's, there's, that you're pushing, you're trying, and and skateboarding, you fall, you you get banged up, you get bruised up. If you're but, not falling, you're not trying. Exactly, um, and so that it, every man should be seeking growth in virtue through through uh, through effort, through mm -hmm. persevering, Amen. Through wrestling with one's brokenness, and and seeing little by little, mm -hmm. it's like okay, like getting better like this is with the grace of mm -hmm. god you know i'm overcoming my fallen passions i'm overcoming my, my 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 sinful selfish weaknesses and little by little i'm doing a little better by the grace of god and that's a that's a beautiful struggle to engage in especially as men we're talking with father mark goring his uh his morning uh, uh youtubes are just excellent it's fr mark goring dot it's at it, fa, fa, FR. Just like that. Father Mark Goring. <laughs> Father Mark Goring on YouTube. Go there and subscribe. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at Deep Adventure. Com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to 
is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Fair Wasnick. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My producers keep telling me to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. And if you sign up for our email newsletter, uh, we'll give you a free audio version. You'll be able to download a free audio version of my mo most recent book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. But also every week you'll get uh, an email Saturday morning, a week uh, you know, before it even airs on EWTN, a YouTube version of that week's radio show. Plus, uh, there's a really cool blog that go that goes along with that too. So, we invite you to go there, subscribe to our newsletter. We we would really love to have you part of our ohana, as we say here in Hawaii. Father Mark, you were talking earlier about how you get a little bit better. Do you know the Lord really spoke to me about that last week? It was basically I know as an athlete and in every area of my life, you're either getting stronger or weaker. There's no such thing as standing still. You know, um, I just went through a, a huge thing this last year. I had, well, for me, it was, <laughs> this is more for my wife. I had prostate cancer and I had to go through radiation. I was in pretty good shape when I started the radiation, but man, that it set me back physically. Uh, you know, I was used to having muscle and and uh, not eating too much, but I found I was running for comfort food and I wasn't able to, just didn't feel I could get up and, and work out. And then I had multiple infections afterwards and then I tore my bicep loose and I had to have surgery. And it was just like a year, uh, 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 2020 for me was just this really amazing, difficult year. And I found myself three months ago saying, okay, now I can, I can get physically fit again. And I, I would sit I would sit on the couch and I'd look at my prayer chair and I would see my books in the evening that I wanted to read. I just didn't have the energy to do that. Uh, but it was like the Lord said, either you're going to get stronger or you're going to get weaker. So you can't sit still. You can't just say, I'm really in a good place. I'm going to maintain where I'm at. As an athlete, we know you just, and, and, and as, a, as a person who's pursuing virtue, what you said is, to me, the Lord really spoke to me that last week, whether it's financially, whether it's in your career, whether it's within your own family structure, whether it's with your friends, whether it's um, uh, in your in your your fitness regimen, your 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 pursuit of the Lord, your pursuit of virtue, either you're growing or you're or you're receding. You don't stand still. I wanted to ask you during this this year of Saint Joseph, what word do you what what is it that Lord is speaking to you about about that? I just had Father Don Calloway on again last week. And of course, his book on Saint Joseph. What is the Lord speaking to you about that? Yeah, well, I mean, a, a number of things. First of all, it's a wonderful grace that we have a year of Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph is a tremendous friend we have in heaven. Uh, they they call him the miracle worker, among other things. You can read from different saints how when things got really desperate, they turned to St. Joseph and just miracles started to happen. A good example is St. Teresa of Avila. Um, for, for me, among other things, you know, St. Joseph, he, he's the interior man. He's the man of silence. He's the mm. man of, of deep contemplation. One of the things I've been struggling with in my life is just too much time going to my phone to check the YouTube videos, to to look at comments, to check the news. I mean, it's been a crazy year. Um, check email, check text messages, uh, and so on. Um, and I just find that I haven't been practicing the presence of God. Mm. You know, I haven't been just silent and gazing on the Lord in, 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 in con contemplative prayer. I'm reading The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection for probably the 20th time. It's a book I love, but I just, I just feel I'm at a, a point in my life where once again, I need to just put everything aside and have that time in the day of just being with with the Lord, like for example, one thing is when I when I eat brunch every day, I used to always have either my iPad or my phone. And I'm checking I'm checking comments. I'm checking this. I'm checking the news. And I just I just one day I said I, I have to be, I have to take a moment and just be in the Lord's presence, just be still. And then 
I go for a walk most afternoons. Same thing. I just I, I leave the phone at home and I just talk to God. I, I, I abide in His presence. So I'm, I'm asking Saint Joseph to help me to become more interior and, and aware of the Lord's presence um, during this year of Saint Joseph. You know, I have this image of Saint Joseph as this meek and mild guy in all those paintings, very soft. But he's not. He's called the terror of demons. He's a tough man. If you were a a technon, as it says Jesus was in the, in the New Testament, that means he was a builder. And he probably, if you've been to Israel, I know, you, I'm sure you have, anyone who's been to Israel knows there's only one house ba- milt, built out of wood there, and that's the prime minister's home. Everything else is cut out of stone. So I'm sure he, he maybe was a carpenter. He probably built, you know, furniture and things like that. But he obviously worked in stone, too. He called Peter the, the, the stone, you know, and, he, and Jesus himself was called the cornerstone. Um, he was strong really strong and must have just uh and and a man's man and i like the way you said you talked about the interior life there's some things father that a man shoulders there's maybe a financial burden or concerns he doesn't share with his wife doesn't share with his children he just needs to shoulder them alone with him and the Lord, and maybe a couple brothers that he can talk to. There may be a financial burden or there may be a, a risk on the horizon, and there's no sense um, um, making your family worry about them. Men just tend to go it alone, and I think during this time, uh, men not, 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 even, not just to go to the Lord or to their friends, but go to St. Joseph because he's, he's, he's— think about the burden he, he carried when he went south to Egypt, you know, escaping from the— Herod slaughtering the children, or when he came back and had to make a new life for themselves up in Nazareth. Um, you don't have to go it alone. You can go to Joseph and say, Joseph, um, help me. Pray for me. Help me Help me to understand. What do you think yeah. about, about the situation th- these days? Uh, people keep talking about unity, uh, and they just what they really mean by that is let's all just be nice. Uh, I don't think we can have unity without truth prevailing. What What is your thought about all this conversation. Yeah, like for me, the bottom line is, is I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I believe he's the way, the truth, and the life. And I mean, we're moments away from eternity. Mm. Scripture says life is like a drop of, of water in, in the sea. It's like a grain of sand. Um, life is wonderful, but it's so short. And to me, the, the one thing... I want to do is I want to be faithful to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to, I want Him to be the center of my life. The Lord Jesus said, "Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, I will be ashamed of before my Father and His angels." And I, I never want to be ashamed of the Lord Jesus because He died for me, and I, I know He has a place prepared for me in heaven. He He's the bridegroom of my soul, to use biblical uh, I- imagery, and so. Um, so yeah, during during these times, if there's one thing I, I keep clear in my mind and heart, it's I, I belong to Jesus. He he shed his blood for me, and I will, with the grace of God, never compromise or, or deny uh, him. Then not compromise my Catholic faith or, or deny the Lord Jesus. And I, I think it's time for Christians, Catholics, to to just be be clear on that. Like when I'm when when life is is drawing to a close I want to know that I love Jesus and, well, and, and was faithful to him let me ask you to do something father because we're running short of time say you know a campus said every man dies sooner than he thinks you know memento mori remember your death father do you remember that moment you when you first encountered Jesus Christ I do it was like an, it changed me radically forever what if there's a trucker or someone driving in their pickup or someone alone in their home right now that would say, whatever it is they have, I want. Can you uh, reach out to them in the next two minutes and pray for them and help them lead them in a prayer of surrender to Jesus? Absolutely. So the Lord uh, tells us, come to me, all you who um, labor and are heavy wearied, and I will give you rest and you'll find rest for your soul. The Lord Jesus says, I will not turn away anyone who comes to me. Um, the, the Lord says, uh, Scripture says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Lord says, you are precious in my eyes and I love you. Mm-hmm. The Lord says, I will not leave you orphan. And so the Lord Jesus is inviting you to simply open your heart to him because he wants to, to come into your heart. He's asking you to, to repent of all of your sins. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the ways I've hurt you and I've hurt others and I've hurt myself. And he will forgive you. And then ask the Lord 
Jesus, to come into your heart, accept him as your Lord and Savior, um, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So just pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I, I thank you that you, you did die on the cross for me because you love me. And Jesus, I am sorry for all the sins of my whole life. And I ask you, please forgive me and wash me clean through your precious blood. And Jesus, I, I do give you my life today. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior, and I invite you to be uh, the Lord of my life. And I ask you, Lord, to fill me with your Holy Spirit and, and reveal to me the love of my Father in heaven. I want to live in union um, with you, and I give you permission, God, to, to do whatever you want in my life. From, from now on, Lord, I, with your grace, I will follow you, and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, amen. And so whoever, if you, if you just prayed this prayer with me with an open heart, the Lord, the Lord has come into your heart because you, you've opened your heart to him. And you're going to notice um, things are going to be different now. There's going to be a new joy. And praise the Lord. And, you know, go to your pastor and, uh, and, uh, or share it with a good friend. You know that friend that's a Christian. Share it with them. And uh, if you're a Catholic, go to confession great, great, great uh, a blessing and confession. Father, we're out of time. We've been talking with Father Mark Goring. Where can they find you on YouTube again? I stumble when I try to tell people. Father Mark Goring, easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you don't subscribe, you need to go subscribe to his... his uh, I, get, I get his, uh, his uh, short little uh, things every morning. They're usually very brief. Sometimes he has them long when he has a guest, but it's something everyone can fit into their dare. Fa Father Mark Goring, thank you for joining us on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. Are you going to say it? Are you going to say Viva Cristo Rey? Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Aloha, everybody. Till next week. Ahui ho. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.